is the silence of the range. It's not the bow. It's it's nor the arrow, nor the target that holds the power. So when, when the range is silent, your mind is not. You know, it's the archer's mind, that invisible force that can uh, make or break champions. Uh, welcome to Archstock 101. We will be unlocking the secrets of mental fortitude and art of archery. So <clears throat> my name is Roy Canterbury. I'm going to be your host today. And we're going to be diving into that mental game we just talked about. So um, imagine you're on the range, bow in hand, uh, the target is in sight, and now let's you get that bullseye ready. So <clears throat> before we get into this, I want to remind everybody on where you can watch uh, the podcast live in the Archduck One on Facebook group, uh, as well as you can get watch replays in the same group as well. Uh, you can go out to my YouTube channel, learn to fix it yourself. Um, and it, and also you can go out to archtalk101.com. Uh, they have all out there out at the YouTube channel. Uh, we have multiple things out, not just archery. We have all kinds of other things out there for you as well. And then on the archtalk101.com, not only do we have the podcast out there, uh, but we have some other information out there as well. You know, if we have an item or review, I can do reviews out there. If there's an item I recommend, you know, we can talk about that. Uh, there's all different things in arches, some equipment you might need to work on it yourself. You know, all that kind of stuff is out there. And you can always get a hold of us in the uh, group as well, and we can help you out there. Now, if you prefer to listen to the audio part of it, uh, so you can listen while you're driving or whatever, uh, Spotify has the uh, audio part of the podcast, as well as audible.com. Uh, that's that's kind of a nice place to listen to the podcasts as, casts as well, um, because they just kind of keep going in there. <clears throat> Now, before we dive into the intricacies of that mental game, it's essential to ensure that the form and the bow is set up uh, are optimized. Uh, you know, proper form and equipment uh, lay the foundation for consistent and accuracy. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's kind of vital for you. If, if you're thinking about, you know, your, your equipment don't feel right or something isn't feeling right, you're not going to be thinking about anything but what's wrong with your bow. You want to have that completely out of your mind. So when we dive into the mental aspects that we're, we're going to be talking about today, uh, we want to make sure that that is all set up and, and going um, good as well. You know, once those are in top condition, you know, then we can start focusing on the mental aspects. So um, first, let's go over a few things. I want to make sure that you understand as far as your setup and your and yourself and your bow uh, before we get too far into it. Let's get in some of the background information, and then we're going to dive into the the you know how to fine tune that mental game. So first off, let's address some common uh, mistakes archers often make. You know, one frequent error is is neglecting you know proper warm up routines. You know, leading to decreased flexibility or increased risk of injury. You know, others ignoring the importance of consistent form you know, which can result in inconsistent performance. You know, we've talked about that, you know, quite a bit in the past. So I just want to kind of bring that up uh, so that, you know, as you're following along and all these lessons that we're going to get through and you're, you're going to have the best setup so that you can dive into those. Now, <clears throat> beginners in archery, they often make, you know, several common mistakes in their performance. You know, here's some of the more frequent ones that that we come across you know, incorrect stance, you know, the proper stance is the foundation for good shooting uh, form. Uh, you know, beginners, they may stand too rigid, you know, they may face the target. So now you're looking at the target, your shoulders are kind of square or almost square to the target, you know, and that don't allow for a good form because you're in kind of a weird position. Now, so you want to get in there. Um, you know, I teach, you know, the tips of the toes are in a straight line with your arrow or your main, your arrow, the tip of your toes points directly to your target. So that's a complete, you know, closed stance. Uh, you need to make sure you, have, you know, if you're shooting that form, you have the rest of your form. It was is conducive to that type of a stance. Uh, a lot of times you'll take that front foot and slide it back slightly. That opens you up. And if you don't have that proper grip, that'll help save your arm from getting hit. Uh, the other thing you can do is, you know, the wrong draw length. If the bow is way too short or way too long for you, you know, that's going to, you know, affect your accuracy as well. Especially if it's really too long, because you're going to have more up to hit that arm. Uh, if it's really too short, you're scrunched up. Uh, you want to be at that comfortable position. Um, I shoot a half inch longer than what my draw length measures. Uh, we'll get in a little bit later on on how to do that. But uh, 
you know, that's something you want to make sure that the draw is correct. That helps you get into that proper form. And like we talked about earlier, as you know, videos can see that alignment. Is that the proper draw length for you with that bow? <clears throat> now, improper bow grip, you know, that that's kind of misleading. You don't grip your bow, you put pressure on it and let it go what it wants to do. So that's kind of the one of the, the things you can you can put tension. You can take a perfectly tuned bow that, you know, if you're shooting through paper, you get a perfect tear every time. Now just grip that bow tight, you know, like, like you had a death grip on it. And now shoot that bow and suit that arrow does. And most likely it's not going to give that good tear that you were just getting uh, because you're putting tensions in that bow uh, that you don't want to have. Now for those shooting fingers, you know, if you're shooting a reach curve or, or a long bows or or you have with the older bows that are real long axle axis and you're shooting with fingers, you know, uh, you know, placing your fingers incorrectly on the bowstring, you can, you know, it can be twisting when you're releasing it, you know, that all affects the flight, you know, how, what proper release technique do you have on that? Are you going through that nice back tension release? Your hand is coming across your face like it's supposed to, or are you plucking it, you know, hand coming out? All that's going to affect it. Uh, you know, the other thing is is not using an arm guard when one is needed. Um, you know, if you didn't use that arm guard, you know, and that bow strikes that forearm, you know, besides being painful, um, you know, that all protects your arm and it keeps your coat out of the way. Now, if you're shooting a compound bow, your draw length is correctly, um, it's set up, you don't need an arm guard. You should not, never be hitting your arm. If you do, you're you're purposely you're you're getting your hand twisted or something in there, uh, you know that just kind of leads to uh, you're really doing something wrong. Uh, now on me, um, I'll get kind of a recoil slap right on my wrist, right above my my watch, in between my watch and my hand, and that's not hitting my arm. That's that's after I've shot, and the bow goes does what it wants to do, and it's got that little recoil and it catches it right there. Um, I don't even really notice it. I just like oh a little red. <laughs> I don't really notice it, uh, but it's not hitting my arm because it, that's that's after the bow's already left, and and it's just hitting that on part of my hand, um, you know. So that's something an arm guard. If you think you need it, wear it. Um, if you're afraid of hitting it, if you've hit your arm before, you know maybe you want to wear an arm guard until you get confidence that you're not hitting it anymore. So that's just something you want to do. <clears throat> now, one of the problems we have is inconsistent anchor point. You know, that that's a, as you draw back where you anchor on your face, you want to do it the same time. If you're shooting fingers, you want to, if you're anchoring the index corner of the mouth, you same point every time. If you're anchoring your jaw down below, like the Olympic archers do, you know, saying so get that little bit longer reach with the uh, other setup, um, you know, or, or if you're using a, a handheld, where what part of your hand fits on there? Uh, you know, if you're using a wrist strap, you know, what part of your hand fits on what part of your face? You want to be consistent every time. The best way is, is bone on bone because it's not as flexible. If you take like your, your meaty part of your hand and try and put it somewhere on like on your chin, uh, there's too much flexibility in, in there. So bone on bone is the best way to do it. Uh, but just be consistent on whatever you're anchoring. Be consistent with it every time. Um, I use a kisser button and a peep. And then touching my nose. So between the peep, the kisser, by my nose, my hand can do multiple things depending on which which release I'm using. Uh, now, if you compound shooters, uh, punching the trigger, that is the biggest thing I see archers that are using a caliper type release or even a handheld type release. Uh, the handheld seems like it's even worse because you got that non dexterous thumb that you're trying to pull this trigger with something that don't have much dexterity. At least index finger has some. If you're punching that trigger, because we can only do one fine motor skill at a time, which is aiming, if you're pulling the trigger or using your thumb, you're not aiming anymore. So where you're hitting, you, you don't know because you quit you quite aiming. Um, one of the things that, you know, by punching the trigger, that can lead to target panic. So what will happen in target panic is, you see it, you're, you're, you're going to pull the trigger when the pin is on top of the target. So you're watching the pin and the target and the pin comes across, starts coming across that finger or that target and you say, pull the trigger. Well, what's going on? That pin is moving off. Now the next thing is say, he's like, oh, don't shoot. So it's start to pull the trigger and don't shoot. That That's your target panic. 
And if you aren't pulling the trigger, all you're doing is focusing on the target, put the pin over it, it's going to float, and then it's going to go off. You don't know it's going to go off, so you don't have target panic. Um, now, if you're having troubles with any of this, one of the things that a lot of archers are, do is they don't seek professional help. You know, all of us need a coach. We need a coach no matter what we're doing. We need a coach, somebody that we can bounce ideas off, look at what we're doing. Um, you know, especially if you're you're beginning, you want to find somebody that's going to help you out. You know, whether it's uh, um, finding somebody in in like the Archer Talk One Hundred and One Facebook group. You know, if you're having trouble with stuff, go ahead and um, ask it in that group because they're going to be uh, able to help you. Uh, you don't have to worry about people trying to sell you stuff because we don't allow selling in that group. So it's just all all pure content information for the archers. You know, so the seek you know qualified coach, someone that's been doing it for a while. You know, like myself, I started, you know, I become a coach in 1995 and I've taught hundreds of shooters how to shoot. Um, I've taught some online, so didn't even, haven't even met him in person yet. Uh, in fact, the first guy I taught online was in Italy and I'm in Nebraska. So I'm teaching a guy in Italy. Um, he's in this group. So um, it, he's, you know, he's in the group. So he may hear this, may not. But, uh, hey, you know, it, it's something that we can we can do. Um, online now that we have that we have access to stuff like that you know we have the zoom zoom call i'm recording this on the zoom so we could easily be teaching on there so there's always ways you can get get help from somebody and there's always a lot of us out there that will be uh, willing to help now let's <clears throat> move on to the next section the importance of the correct draw length and draw weight that is is something we kind of alluded to a little bit earlier but you know to excel in archery it's not just about physical strength you know, the quality of your equipment. It's also about the harmony between the archer and the bow. So getting that that perfect draw like setup for you that feels good to you, that draw weight that you can easily pull. I, I like to, you know, especially new archers, if you can slowly draw that bow back like a deer is kind of watching you, you aren't shooting too much weight. If you have to bend way back and drawing across your chest and moving up, you know, if you're out hunting, you ain't going to get anything because you're going to have too much movement um, as well as you're going to use the wrong muscles when you're drawn. So that's what you want to do. Make sure you have that, you know, that alignment, you know, is, is crucial in achieving that consistency. So make sure that you're not drawing too much weight or that draw length is not right for you. Make sure all that fits uh, so that you, you feel comfortable with that bow. It, it, you know, if you're shooting it enough, it's going to feel like part of you. You're not, it's going to feel like it's it's not something that you're shooting. It's just a part of you that you draw that energy, you store it, and then it just goes off. So that's something you want to work for and letting that feel right. And that if the draw length's not right, the draw weight's not right, uh, your form's not right, all that can, can affect it. So now <clears throat> for those that don't know how to figure out your draw length, um, I'm going to go through a couple steps that you're going to figure out, you know, so how you can measure your draw length. Now, this is a starting point. You know, all the people I've tested this on, I've, I have yet to find anybody that's longer than this formula tells you. Almost always that or shorter. So one of the first steps, you know, in, in that getting that fine tuning is ensure that both fit you. So, you know, let's measure that draw length accurately and, and, you know, let this, you're going to need a friend to help you with this because you're going to be measuring stuff. So stand with your arms stretched out like a T you know, all the way out. Don't, you know, stretch as far as you can. Just comfortably put them out and then point, you know, your, your fingers such your palms are pointing forward. And now then have somebody measure the distance between the tip of the middle finger to the tip of the other uh, finger. So that's the that's longest between your middle fingers are normally the longest. So measure between there. Now take that number and divide by two and a half. Uh, and that'll find your draw length. You know, for instance, let's say um, they measured, you measured at 70 inches. And then your draw length would be your wingspan, which is that 70 inches divided by two and a half would give you a 28 inch draw length. So that's where I would start with on a draw length, see how it feels, and then maybe go 27 and a half. You know, maybe you need to go a little shorter. Now me, when I measured, we measured mine, I was 29 and a half. Uh, at that time, I was shooting 32 inches, which is what I thought I was, because the first bow uh, was a 32-inch bow, and I went in the shop, and, and she had, oh, draw that back. How's that feel? 
I didn't know. It's like, okay, it was 32 inches. So when I had to get another bow, I'm looking for a 32 inch draw length bow. Well, I had one. And when I went to you know, shooting school, uh, they measured me at 29 and a half inches. So I had to take that 32 inch bow and make it 29 and a half inches from Friday night when they measured everybody to Saturday night when the class was. So I had basically Saturday to make my bow 29 and a half inches. So I had to cut off, you know, two and a half inches of draw length. Well, we did, and it felt short for a long time. And then after I shoot for a while, now I shoot 29. I like that, just that little half inch shorter because we talked about an arm guard earlier. Um, big, heavy coats in the wintertime. I've hit my arm, the coat, before when I draw length was too long. And now with that 29-inch draw length that I'm shooting, I don't hit those big, heavy coats. So, and that's what's comfortable for me is just that half inch shorter. Because we have a little more bend in my arm. And the way I, I teach it, you know, I want that arm to extend out. Uh, as I shoot, I want it to extend out to the target. So that's something to make sure that is all right. So we're kind of going a little, a little more back in a little bit in more detail uh, about how to set it up, because I think it's important to make sure that your equipment is set up right before we can get in to try and, you know, fine tune that metal game. Now, <clears throat> as a beginner, you know, selecting the right draw weight, you know, for your bow, you know, that's kind of a, you know, a crucial step, you know, in developing. You don't want to be shooting too heavy a weight to start with. Um, you, you know, basically, you know, recurve, you know, beginners, you know, they start dry weight 20 to 25 pounds. Um, if you're using compound weight, you know, that can vary. Uh, my first bow when I was, you know, I think just barely a teenager was a 25 pound fiberglass recurve, uh, Ben Pearson. I still have it. I don't shoot it because the fiberglass is starting to split a little bit, but I still have that bow and the string that was on it when I was shooting it when I was a kid. Um, in fact, I put a little bracket on it to hold for a fishing reel and I can't even get my hand in it anymore. But that's when I was, you know, like just barely a teenager. So <clears throat> now I've got a little bit of quick reference uh, for compound bows to start off with, you know, a, a youth between like eight and 12, you know, you're going to start off with. Uh, 10 to 16 pounds is roughly a, a, a place to start, uh, you know, and teenagers from, you know, 12 to 14, you know, maybe 14 to 22 pounds, a little bit older teens, you know, 15 to 18, you know, 24 to 28 pounds. Now that's where to start. That doesn't mean that you're going to, you know, you stay there. Um, young women and, and male teens, you know, a little, little bit older, 26 to 36 pounds, uh, you know, that's going to be kind of a, a range and then um, ladies with above average strength and, and younger males, you know, 30 to 40 pounds and the average uh, man, you know, 40 to 50 pounds. Now then the men and women with above average strength, you know, 40 to 60 pounds, you know, that's that's where they can start. Now, that didn't mean they have to stay, but that's that's uh, some place to start. And, and you don't want to start too heavy because you're going to get too tired. You're going to lean to good form, you know, so. It's important to start with that weight that's going to light to shoot it comfortable, uh, comfortably so you can focus on your form. After all, starting off with the form is what counts. Until you get the form down, we talked about that earlier in one of the other podcasts, until you get that form, it don't do even put any sights on your bow because if that, the form isn't right, you're not going to do it. And you want that draw weight to be easier than harder to start with. Now we've kind of gone through all of the preliminary stuff to make sure, you know, we understand what we have to do with the boat equipment. So we're going to, at this point, we're going to assume that all that fits you perfectly. You know, you've got the bow set up, so it's just part of you and you're just comfortable with it. You don't have to think about what's going on with the bow. You're just there. Uh, so now let's get into the metal game in archery. You know, the metal game in archery is often what separates the good archers from the great ones. It's not about having a steady hand or an eye for an aim. It's about the ability to maintain focus, you know, composure and confidence, you know, under pressure. You know, that's the importance of mental strength and archery, you know, that can't be over, you know, can't be overstated. You know, that's the important part. You know, seeing a moment, of, a single moment of distraction or doubt, you know, can be the difference between hitting a bullseye and missing the target entirely. So that's just a, a just an instant, you know, you can change. You know, let's say for an example, the an archer, you know, full draw aiming at the center during 
high stakes competition, the physical aspects are drawing the bow and aiming is crucial. But really, truly matters is at the moment the archer's mental state, you know, are they able to block out all the noise of the crowd, you know, the, the weight, you know, if that expectation, you know, the, the focus solely on the shot, you know, this sort of mental training comes into play, you know, <laughs> archery, you know, mental training, you know, the art, or you can call archery psychology, you know, involves preparing yourself to take that shot with a clear and focused mind. It's about exercising your brain to improve that overall shot ability. You know, this includes setting goals for improvement, focusing on technique, and developing a consistent mental routine that aligns with your physical actions. You know, mental toughness enables archers to maintain that focus throughout the competition. You know, minimizing that impact, you know, of distractions and maintaining, you know, high level of concentration. You know, that that's what we're striving for. You know, that that and that is the challenge, you know. Um, you know, some of the common mental challenges for archers, you know, includes manning competition nerves. You know, are you getting nervous, you know, when when you're there? Um, you, you know, performance anxiety, you know, you know, that you know, where you're you're afraid, you know, you're thinking about, you know, are you gonna do good? You know, and and the things you know, the mental the mental things that you start telling yourself is going to make you you know hit that the center shot like you want, or it's going to make you start missing. Um, you know, and then there's pressures. You don't you want to perform at your best. You know, every, all of us want to perform at the best. So now you put yourself under that pressure. It's like, okay, I did this last one. I I have to do better. I have to do better. Um, you know, I I can't miss. Is you know one of the things that we say to ourselves that that actually makes us miss you know that that you want to concentrate on you know on on the skills not the, the outcome you know one of the things that i I'd, I'd heard in one other one is like you know once you make a decision you know don't worry about the outcome you know so once you go in there don't worry about what the arrow does after you shot go through just focus on everything you want throughout that whole shot you know you know, there, there's a couple of things that you can do to practice, you know, the, you know, and practice mindful meditation, you know, and then train your mind to stay present and focus, you know, use visualization and, and mental rehearsal, you know, rehearsing of your shots, you know, to engage that positive, you know, self-talk to and reinforce the abilities of, past, you know, of past success. You know, I, I was listening to a, um, an audible on the way home and is talking about, you know, uh, Babe Ruth, you know, the, the uh, highest ha held the record for the highest number of home runs, but he also held the highest record for the number of strikeouts. So, you know, a star baseball player only hits 30% of the time, the rest of the time they fail and they're a star, you know? So when you think about it, it's like, and what did they focus on? They didn't focus the fact that he struck out, you know, I imagine his whole focus was, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit that ball out of the park, whatever it takes. I'm gonna hit it out of the park, and he misses. No big deal. Next time he gets up, I'm gonna hit it out of the park. You, you know, so that's something you look at too. Is you know when when you get up there, go through the whole mental aspect uh, of of going through, and you know we can kind of talk about some of this stuff a little bit later too. But uh, we'll go into a little more stories a little bit later too if we have you know have have some time on here. We'll see if anybody has any questions in the in the group. Yeah, not yet. So, um, and that now let's dive a little deeper into the mental game. You know, where where champs are truly made. You know, the the champs that you know the psychology behind peak performance in archery. You know, it's kind of fa fascinating and overlooked. Um, drawing insights from Max Maxwell Vaults. Um, he has a, a, a good book that I actually have been, you know, listening to it now, Psycho Cybernetics, you know, there, you know, he understands the subconscious mind and plays with a pivotal role in, in shaping the performance, you know, on, on the range. Um, you know, his, it, it, it's actually good. If you want a, a good book, that's going to help you through the, some of the mind games and get, listen to that book. It's a, it's a long, every, the audible is like 14 hours long. So it's going to keep you busy on on long trips or going to and from work. So it it's just something that's it's really cool and and I wanted to include some of that in this because the, the principles that he teaches, you know, you know about self image and the mental picture, 
you know, we hold of ourselves, you know, that directly infects our actions and outcomes. You know, when we visualize ourselves as skilled, confident archers, you know, hitting, hitting the bullseye with ease, our subconscious mind accepts that as truth and works tireless to align our actions, you know, with this image. You know, conversely, you know, if our image is clouded with doubts and insecurities or performance on the range, you know, may suffer as a result. Native self-talk and limited beliefs, you know, that can sabotage the efforts, you know, to prevent us from reaching our full potential. Um, you know, one, one of the examples that, that I use a lot, you know, about what you're, you're thinking about, you want to think positive, um, what you say is what you're going to think about. So let's do a couple different scenarios. One, you know, for those of you that know what the American flag looks like, okay, I don't want you to think about the American flag. Now, now the American flag, you know, it's, it's pretty nice, but don't think about the American flag. And, you know, once again, I don't want you to think about the American flag. What are you thinking about? What are you picturing? You're picturing the American flag. So you can use that same kind of thing. It's like, okay, um, I see my arrow dead center, you know, in your X ring, there's, there's a little X in it or some of them a little circle. My arrow is sitting dead center in that, that little X in there, dead center. That's where my arrow is. I go up there and I'm thinking, that's where my arrow is. I got five arrows in the center of that target. I got five arrows in the center of the target. So what are you thinking about? Five arrows in the center of the target. Now, if somebody says, well, don't miss. So Val says, well, hope you don't miss. What are you thinking about? Missing. So what are you going to do? You're going to miss. Uh, this same thing I seen, I was watching, with, I told this a little bit earlier, but um, on one of the other podcasts, but I was watching one of the um, the cooking shows and one of the the hosts come around that does all the judging and is and it, this one lady was just, you know, cutting up whatever vegetable it was. And, and he says, don't cut yourself. And it wasn't two minutes later, medic, she cut herself. So what did he do? He put cut herself in her mind. So now what did her mind focus on? Cutting herself, cutting herself. That's not, you forget the knot. You think they're cutting yourself. So what did you do? And I'm cutting herself. So if he would have just not said anything, most likely, she, you know, she wouldn't have cut herself. So what you think of is what you're going to get. So that's some of the things that we want to look at. You know, you want to, um, you know, cultivate that positive self-image, you know, and, and, you know, nurturing a silent mindset, you know, is paramount to achieving success, you know, by practicing visualization techniques, you know, affirmations and mental rehearsals, you know, we can reprogram our sub subconscious to support these goals. So what you want to do is go up there and go through your whole process. You know, if, if you have to do this before you even take a shot, go up there before before it's your time to even go up to the line. In your mind, you can do your eyes closed or eyes open. You're walking up to the line. You put your one front and your foot in front. You get your line. You get your bow ready. You grab your arrow. You knock your arrow. You come up. You draw back. You get your anchor point, and you're aiming at your target. Your shot goes off, and that arrow is dead center in your target. Come back, and then now you mentally go through all five shots before you even go to the line. Now, when you go walk up to the line, you're picturing what you just pictured in your mind, walking up to the line. You're going through your first shot. You draw back, you draw back, you're focusing on that arrow in the center because you've already pictured you're going to do this, and you shoot, and that arrow goes in the center. Well, now, now you're you're off that picture. Whatever it did, you don't care. Because at the point you release that arrow, it's done. You don't even pay attention to it. You go to the next process. Process getting your second arrow and your second round, shooting at your second target and going through and you shoot that. Once once that arrow is off, okay, now you start resetting into the mental pictures you presented of yourself, going through your third shot and your fourth shot. Don't worry about where it goes because you've already pictured it being dead center. You don't want to look at. Now, if you go up there and one's not, it's like, oh, okay. I, I got four of them, right? What did I do wrong on that one? You know, maybe you lost a little focus. That's what you're going to go back to. You know, <clears throat> you know, understanding, you know, the principles of goal setting, you know, and, and feedback loops, you know, 
you set your goal, you know, this is kind of outlined in cyber, cyber, cycle cybernetics. It's kind of a hard word to say sometimes. Um, you know, getting listened to that book is going to help reaffirm, you know, kind of what I'm saying here. You know, it's going to enhance that mental game, you know, setting clear, achievable goals, you know, it regularly, you know, assessing your goals as you're going through there. So you've got your goal of, you have your goal of going through there, going through shooting those five arrows, and those are all good. So maybe you want to set a goal to go through, um, now mentally go through this and practice, um, you know, going through your whole 60 shots, you know, mentally do this. If you can't get to the range, you know, take time and and sit down and mentally go through it. Even if you, you're sitting there and you're going through and using your body, going through it, going through the motions, and your picture and everything going off. You hit dead center of the X. You come through with your all, all with your eyes closed. You're feeling that shot going off, and and you go through that whole thing each time. And you know, set a goal to go through there. And now you've pictured yourself getting that uh, 360 X. You've you've pictured yourself doing it. So now you've done it in your mind multiple times, and now it's just a matter of going up and actually actually doing it. Your mind's already told yourself you can do it. You know that. You know, the mental game that we're kind of playing with ourselves here, you know, it, it's all about harnessing the power of the subconscious mind, you know, setting, you know, setting the stage for our, our success by overcoming mental barriers, you know, that, that may hinder our, per, our per, performance. By applying lessons, you know, that, that teach, you know, Maxwell Maltz teaches in psycho-cybernetics, uh, we can, you know, unknot that potential and become actors, you know, archers. Um, we inspire to be. So, um, you know, I encourage you to, to check out that book. You can get it on Audible so you can listen to it. Uh, that's how I'm listening to it. It's nice. It's all set up where you can, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do in there. It's a really, really good book. So that's kind of where I got a lot of my information on here um, about this because it just kind of, you know, what I'm thinking about as I was listening to that. And that that's just, that's just um, really helping out with what, um, you know, what I'm doing in here. And, you know, really getting the information in here that that's going to keep everything, um, you know, kind of together. And that's really helping out a little bit, you know, and me working and, and working at that and and then going through and, um, you know, helping helping other archers, you know, through that mental game, because that's the biggest challenge is how do you block out stuff and how do you program your mind to do what you want it to do, you know. As, let's see. Um, let's talk about you know setting goals. Um, you know that cybernetic mechanism is akin to programming your mind. So that's what we're kind of do. We're trying to program your mind. Um, you know, let, let's kind of dive in a little bit into you know leveraging you know that self-regulating system. You know, with your subconscious mind. You know, you want to set the goals that are effectively you know, going to improve your skills. You want to incorporate insights from, you know, what Maxwell Maltz teaches. You know, that's kind of what we're going in here is, is some of the stuff here. I'm kind of trying to relay uh, all the stuff that's in those, um, well, 10 hours of, I've listed 10 hours of the 14 so far, or uh, 12, I think it's 14 hours or four hours, 10 hours. I forget, it was, it was so long. I forget how it was like. So I got about four hours left. I think I got six hours into it. So um, there's, there's a lot of information in there and every, everything is a little bit more. So one of the things I'm going to talk about is, you know, we're, we're understanding the cybernetic mechanism. You know, Maltz teaches us that our mind is a goal seeking mechanism. You know, it consistently seeks to achieve the goals and objectives we set for ourselves, you know, by setting that clear, positive goal, you know, for your archery practice. You, you you can activate that cybernetic mechanism, cybernetic mechanism, uh, dir directing you know directing our thoughts and behaviors into you know actions we this, you know to our desired outcome. I need some water. Been, been talking too long here. <laughs> now one of the things you're gonna do is you want to set a clear and positive goal. You know begin by defining your clear and positive goals. You know, that inspire you to motivate. You know, if it's not something that you really want to do, um, you, you're you're not going to motivate yourself. You know, you can visualize hitting the bullseye. You know, with precision and consistency. You know, we, I mentioned that a little bit earlier. You know, what's your your subconscious mind? 
you know, your subconscious mind does not distinguish between real and imagined. Um, so by vividly imagining success, you prime your mind to align your actions with this objective, you know, steering you towards, you know, success and range. You know, if you constantly picturing yourself going through this, you know, if you're at a tournament and, you, and you've, you know, you, you're just, you're kind of jittery, you know, just stand someplace and close your eyes and go through the whole shot process for all 60 arrows, you know, where you wait for your turn to come up. While the other group is is up there shooting, you got plenty of time to go through your shot process, go through and do it. Don't just kind of rush through it. Say, okay, it's first shot, second, third, fourth, fifth shot. Take the same time as if you were shooting it. You know, when, when the group ahead of you is shooting their 60 arrows, you visualize you shooting when they're shooting their first five arrows or assuming you're shooting a five spot. Um, as they're shooting their five arrows, you're shooting your five arrows, but you're getting perfect shots every time. As they go to their next one, you do the same thing. You're going through. So it's the same cadence as if you were on the range, you're actually doing it. And now when you get up there, you've already mentally shot that, you know, that 60x 300 round. Because that's what it takes to win nowadays. You know, when I first started, it's like, you know, 298, you'd win. And now 300, you may not win, you know, because there's, there's archers out there getting 60 X's. And how are they doing it? Well, not only they practice, but they've developed this mental game. So they've mentally told themselves that they can do this and they're doing it. So... <clears throat> I haven't talked to any of them yet, but I'm trying to get one on the podcast to talk to them. Uh, what do you go? What's your mind going through to prepare for this? And and I wouldn't be not surprised if they they mentally visualize all this going on because that really helps. Now, <clears throat> now, we've been talking about imagination. You want to you know embrace that power, that imagination, you know, in performance. You know, really feel, you know, imagine that perfect shot. Every time you shoot, yeah, you know, bow leaves. You know what a perfect shot feels like because remember in an earlier podcast, we went through how to tell what that perfect shot feels like. And when you're thinking about think about that perfect shot going off, how it feels in your hand, because you can make it feel however you want uh, in, in your hand. You, you don't you don't know the difference uh, because your mind is seeing what your you, you know your eyes are kind of picking up and transmitting what, what your mind is seeing. So it doesn't know whether the mind has created it or the eyes have created it. So your subconscious is going to do what you tell it to do. Um, you know, just immerse yourself in those mental imagery. You know, you know that will activate, you know, that kind of activates the neural pathways, you know, that it, so that you can execute that shot flawlessly. You know, you've developed those neural pathways to do that. Just, just like in, um, you know, martial arts, when we, we practice something, you know, we practice it and practice it and practice it. And next thing you know, um, you know, it's just a reaction. You know, that's why, you know, a lot of times you'll some, see somebody in martial arts, you know, that something start rolling off the table. And this next thing you know, they, they, they're grabbing it. It's like, how they grab it? Well, they knew it was going to be and went to where it was going to be, not where it's at. You know, we just out of practice, we've done that. You know, you drop something and just uh, catch it. And one of the drills we used to do is, you need to be ready from from a you know punch you know the, from the rear hand, and they'd have a a, a a punching bat, a bag you know the little little handheld ones, and they would about head high they'd drop it, and you had to punch it from clear back by your waist to out and clear in the front of you by the time that bat you know that pad got past you so you had to punch it so you had to see it anticipate where it's going to be and not where it's at. So you didn't learn to anticipate that. And so you train it. So it's not, it's just muscle memory. So now when, and so you just automatically do it. You know, you don't have to think about it. You know, you've done it so many times. It's just muscle memory. You're just muscles, just do it. Um, you know, that's why, you know, somebody's had a lot of martial arts training. It's it, probably not a good idea to come up and grab them from behind <laughs> because the reaction takes over. And then they think, you know, it's just a reaction uh, to what's what they've been trained to do. Um, that's just like, you know, we're going to do an archery is you want to, um, you want to train enough so that you don't have to think about what you're doing. You just know, you come back and put over there, you go through your process, 
You don't need to think about, okay, I need to get my grip in this position. I need to put this. I need to drop back. I need to make sure you get the anchor point and all this. So you're not thinking through all this. Because while you're thinking about that, it's not practice enough. You're not in, you know, going through all that. Uh, you you want to um, take a look at, um, you know, all the different aspects. Oh, had to had to sneeze there. <laughs> hey, had to mute there. So, um, so let you know you want to embrace that positive feedback. You know, it's a tool there for you to refine your technique. Just make sure you're going through it and and identify all those things that you want to work on. And if there's something you want to work on, you know, take a video of yourself. And see, oh, I need to work on this. Now they just focus on that one thing. You know, pitch, start pitching. You're doing it right, doing it right, doing it, doing it how, not not necessarily right, but doing it the way you need to do it to make you a better shot. So just keep going through there, and you know, just keep applying those those the principles we've been talking about. You know, setting goals, visualization. You know, positive feedback. Um, you know, practice. You know, if you visualize that perfect practice, you're going to have that perfect practice. Um, you know, we, we can just go through and just, just look at that stuff. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to, um, you know, really get a lot of detail in here, but I'm trying to get as much as I can kind of explain the different things, what you can do and what, you know, to help you out. Because after all, you know, we're, we're at the point now we need to fine tune our, our mental game. You know, that's that's what we're trying to do here. And, and this one is is help you improve that mental game where now you can take it to that next level. You know, <clears throat> you know, and, and just just remember that goal setting and visualization, those are powerful tools that gonna impact your archery. You know, one of the things we do is setting goals. So let's kind of go over a little bit on ways that you can set a clear goal. Um, you know. Setting goals in archery, and it begins with you know clarity and spe specific specific uh, goals. Um, you want to be specific in it. You know, instead of vague goals like improve my shooting, um, start for you know strive for what they call a smart goals, which is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. You know, so instead of saying I want to I want to get better, well, so an example would be increase my accuracy by ten percent within the next three months. You know, you know, is that a smart goal? Well, that provides a clear direction and a tangible target, you know, to aim for. So you have everything in there. You have a specific goal. You want to increase by 10%, which, you know, that's an easy number to figure out. What is your score now? And, and add 10% to it. So you want to increase by how many points it happens to be. Um, you know, is it measurable? Yeah, because did you increase by 10%? Uh, is it achievable? Well, yeah, um, yeah. Unless you're shooting 360 X's, it's kind of hard to increase by 10 percent because you're already there. So what you want to do then is you want to say, okay, I want to shoot um, instead of one 360 X, I want to shoot two in a row. I want to shoot three in a row, four in a row, because uh, you know you you may throw one once in a while. So so now then you're you're at that 360 X. Now your goal is to get two of them in a row. You got two of them in a row, and now you reset your goal. I want three in a row. You get three in a row, you reset your goal. You only want four in a row. And so, just it, once you achieve that goal, kind of you know, keep updating it. Now, <clears throat> once you've defined your goals, it's time to visualize your know, success. So, now your visualization uh, involves you know vivid imagination you know imagine yourself sitting you know sitting on those we've kind of talked about that you know closing your eyes mentally rehearse each step um you know from knocking arrow to release the shot hitting the target uh, everything you know engage all your senses you know use as be as realistic as possible you know if there's sounds that you're hearing you know maybe when you're visualizing you're hearing other bows going off you can hear the bows next to you going off and, you know, because it's not quiet. So now you start putting those sounds in there, you know, and smells or something, you know, say you're at a tournament and and, and they're cooking food and, you, and the, you got the food, you know, smell of food, you know, just visualize, add whatever you need to, to make it as realistic as possible. And, and by setting those goals, visualize them, you're just going to get a whole lot better at, at what you're doing. 
yeah, you just need to be consistent. That's the biggest thing. Um, you know, you want to in, incorporate, like we talked about, you know, visual, visualization, um, you know, in your pre-practice routines. You know, try this when you're you, you going to this practice. It's not even been a tournament. You're going to go practice. You know, say you, you're going to shoot, you know, if you're going to shoot a three spot, you know, then you go through your routine of shooting a three spot. You know, if it's it's the three that form a triangle, you know, then you're going to picture that. If you're going to shoot the three in a row, shoot that. If you're going to shoot a single spot, uh, shoot that. If you're going to do five spot, whatever you're going to shoot, just use that as your visualization and go through. And then that's going to ingrain it in your subconscious and then make it easier to translate, you know, that mental imagery to tangible results. <clears throat> you know, just you ask to remember that the, setting the goals and visualizing your targets, it's not a wishful thinking. You know, it, you need to prime it for success. This needs to be what you're going to do. You're going to set that clear goal and you're going to visualize that goal and then you're just going to keep going for it. <clears throat> now, we've got some of our uh, effective uh, visualization techniques, you know, it, that's, that is actually a pretty powerful tool that can enhance your archery. So, you know, you want to create that detailed image. You know, one of the things you can do, you know, to help with this is find a quiet space where you can relax without interruptions. Uh, close your eyes, take a deep breath, uh, center your focus, imagine yourself preparing for your shot, feeling the bow in your hands, and seeing the target in front of you. You know, envision the process of the draw and the bow, aiming and releasing the arrow. You know, feel the success of the arrow hitting the target exactly where you intended. You know, that's where you're going to actually see what's going. When you're actually shooting it for, you know, live, you don't don't focus on the arrow because the only that that can only give you negative feedback. You're just you're pitching everything. Don't worry about it until you you know done shooting. You know, like the Kenny Rogers song. You know, there, there's time to count. You know, the time for dealing, time for counting, and time for counting is not while you're playing. It's after you're done. So I don't remember the exact words, but everybody's heard that Kenny <laughs> Rogers song. You know. <clears throat> Yeah, by going through those, you will improve your shots. You know, there's a lot of athletes that uh, um, employ this technique, you know, and they prove and focus and, and reduce anxiety. Uh, there's there's some, you know, examples here that, you know, goal setting, you know, that we can, we can talk about, you know. Uh, here Here's one thing for goal setting, you know, as an intermediate archer, you set your goal to improve, you score an average of 10 points in the next six weeks. You know, you break this down into smaller goals, like adjusting your stance and practicing your draw technique five days a week. Uh, now, visualization, you know, let, let's take your, your competitive archer. Now, you're going to visualize your entire routine before a tournament. You imagine the weight of the bow, the tension in your muscles, uh, the focus on your target, and the feeling of the release. You know, this mental practice does help you stay calm and focused during actual competition. You know, and and if you do get to one and you're having a little, little trouble, it's like just normally you've got plenty of time. And, you know, if you start feeling a little little tension, close your eyes. You get you know, normally you've got plenty of time to take make your shot. It's it's not like you're rushed to shoot them. You know, you you shot you sometimes you, in the time you have to shoot, sometimes you can you shoot two arrows. So you got time. Go ahead, close your eyes, bring your bow up, mentally go through. Um, and then go through your shot, you know, even if you don't want to draw it back or anything, just mentally go through it and wake up and, you know, wake up. I mean, open your eyes and now go through that process. Just imagine, you know, it's going to take a lot of those nerves out of there. You know, by going through all this, you're going to get, you're going to get better. Um, you know, let's, we, we kind of talked about some of our techniques, you know, let, let's kind of review some of the technique, um, Place where you can you can have problems, you know, that can hinder you in the process. You know, one thing is your stance. You know, you gotta make sure your stance is stable. Um, you know, shoulder width apart, um, you know, such weights evenly distributed. You know, all that can affect what's going on because you're thinking about it. that's what you do is visualize all that being going in through here. You know, your grip, you know, you want to pay attention to that grip. Uh, you know, that stuff we talked about at the beginning, you know, so I'm not gonna elaborate too much on it, but um you don't actually grip the bow. You just put your hand in. It's just there to keep it from coming back at you. You know, knock your arrow. Make sure that knocks on consistently. You know, if you have 
have an arrow that, you know, it should snap on and you don't snap it on. All of a sudden the arrow falls off. That can mess everything up for you. Because all of a sudden this arrow falls and now you're all, you're, you're just all, all messed, you know, it can mess you up. Well, if that happens, just leave the arrow lay. Grab another arrow. You should always have more arrows than what you need in your quiver anyway. Let lay on the ground. It's gone. Just it, it's forget it. Just go through your whole process again. Grab your arrow, go through, and, and ignore it. You get time to pick it up when you're done shooting. Um, <clears throat> now, drawing your bow. Remember, we talked about that, you know, in one of the previous episodes. You want to make sure you have a smooth, fluid draw. You don't want to have any jerky motions or nothing because that doesn't lead to consistency as you, you're going through trying to push it back really hard or whatever. You know, you want to make sure that you're drawing your bow in, in, in a good, you know, good smooth way. To release, you know, make sure you've got that release all, all set up smooth. Um, it's set up the way you like it. It's in there. If it's not feeling right, adjust it, you know, make sure it feels right on your hand. You know, and here's one thing to follow through that I don't think we've talked about too much before is once that arrow leaves your bow, you're not done with your shot. Your shot's not done until the arrow actually hits the target. Now, if it's a long ways out, it's going to be a little while. But when you shoot, I've, I've seen archers all of a sudden trying to look over the bow to see where the arrow's going. Well, you're shooting and trying to see where it's going at the same time. You're going to be you're going to be affecting where the arrow flies, and it's not going to go where you want it to. Shoot, let that go bow go. If you have one of the bows that's going to tilt forward in your hand, go ahead and let it tilt forward. Once it tilts forward, that arrow's already gone. Um, if it just sits in your hand, just follow through. Just keep aiming on that target, and when you follow through, keep aiming at that target. You're going to hear your arrow hit. Once that arrow hits, there's you don't need to aim anymore. So that'll keep you follow through. That's that's a big thing in in, in a lot of, of shooting sports is the follow through. Um, not just shooting sports, you know, a lot of a lot of sports that in, involve you know any kind of a technique where you're you're doing a motion, uh, basketball, you know, throwing a basket, golf, um, tennis, uh, you know, all, all those that kind of sports. Uh, Anytime you have any kind of a projectile that you're doing or anything you're throwing, football, the follow through is you're throwing that football. You have it. You don't just throw them when you release, let go. You follow through. <laughs> Same thing in archery. You want to make sure you follow through. Break, you know, break it down a little bit. And, you know, that you've got the thing that we're going to talk about here is the self-image. You know, the self-image plays a lot in it. You know, you know, let's detail some of the benefits, you know, perception about yourself impacting performance. You know, if if you have a positive self-image, we'd say, I, I'm I'm a I'm an archer. I hit what I'm aiming at. You know, you go through all that stuff. You know, if you think it's like, well, I'm not as good as them. You're right, you're not. You never will be because you just said they're better than you are. You know, if somebody's shooting better than you. Like, I can beat them. If if you don't have the skill, you know what? You can learn the skill. Because there's nobody out there that can't be beat. Somebody's going to beat them. And it might be a young kid that's just starting out his first tournament ever, and he beats a, a pro that's been doing it for 30, 40 years. It can be done, and it has been done. So, um, you know, you just want to make sure you keep that positive thing. You know, at times you're going to have that negative uh, talk come into your head. You know, just just limits. You know, if you say, well, you know, they've been shooting for 30 years and they're winning tournaments all the time. You know, who am I to come in here and challenge them? Well, now you just told yourself you, you're never going to beat them, and you know, aren't going to beat them unless you change. You know, get rid of that negative and and you know, say that hey, you know, I can do this. I, I can, I'm shooting as good as they are, so why can't I win? And you want to go through, you know, just just keep, you know, the the skills that you've learned, just keep going with them. Uh, when you do have a win, whether, you know, big or small, celebrate it. Celebrate those wins, no matter how small they are. You know, you, you've got, you go through and it's like, okay, I got my first 300. Don't care how many X's you got. You never got a 300 before. So 
that's a small win. And then you can just gradually go in. It's like it'll add up the number of X counts and, and just keep going. It's just small win. Just celebrate them. Um, and then what you want to do is if you've got people around it that are always negative, they're not going to help you out. You want to stay around people that are positive, you know, your coaches and teammates that are positive, you know, they're going to support you. If you're not doing good, they're going to help you get over that and and just keep you going, keep you encouraged. It's like, you, you, know, you know, you can do it. They know you can do it. Um, so, you know, what's, what's going on, you know, maybe there's something, maybe you've got something in your mind that you're not think, you know, you're not thinking about you. This just don't feel good for you. Um, now, if you do have failures, you know, you're, you're not, you're shooting for that 300 and you miss it by one point. Well, it's not fair. You get 299. There's a lot of archers that can't even break 200. You get 299. And what did you do on that one that you missed? What did you do wrong? Well, okay, I, I lost focus. Well, that's why you lost focus. Um, you know, there, there could be all kinds of different things. Um, don't don't let them bother you. Like I said, you know, uh, a pro baseball player uh, loses, you know, misses the bat, strikes out, you know, 70% of the time they strike, they don't get a hit. So, and they're a star. They failed 70% of the time and they're, they're one of the top stars. So don't worry about that. Just focus on the good stuff. Yeah. And then you want to just keep, you know, keep an open mind, stay curious. You know, there may be something that uh, you can do differently. You know, maybe, maybe somebody's got a, a technique that they, they are doing and you're not right before tournament or anything. And it's like, okay, that seems to be working pretty good for them. Why is it working for them? What's different about what I'm doing? Maybe I can tweak just a little bit and try it. If it doesn't, it doesn't improve your scores, well, then you can stay with it because it didn't hurt them. It didn't hurt them, didn't improve them. It's just different. Shoot whether you like better. You know, you can always do that. So <clears throat> let, let's talk about um there's there's some inspirations that you know I was able to get from Maxwell Maltz's book, Cycle Cybernetics. Um, you know, he's got the groundbreaking work on there. That's kind of a new thing that's come along where they start talking about, you know, how the mind plays all these roles in there. And, you know, they can be applied not just in archery, but in any field. Uh, you know, the, the core concept um, of the cybernetics mechanisms, you know, provides actionable strategies, you know, that the leverage the principles to to achieve success on the range you know that self programming uh, is is the thing that we really go through um and and just you just got to program you know it's like programming your subconscious mind is like programming a computer you just tell it what to do and just keep telling it what to do and eventually it doesn't and when i first started out in computers it's like you know they, they there wasn't really they didn't really do a lot like they did now um, you know, back when I first first was designing with them, what I used for a main processor chip a few years later was just dedicated running a keyboard. It used to be the whole computer was running on it. And now it's just set up for just it just runs a keyboard. You know, and you know, math processor chips didn't even exist. So now they got just this math. And then, you know, look at what computers are doing now with AI. You know, there, there's a lot of things and, and a computer understands either it's on or off. Each bit is either on or off. That's all it knows. There, there's no, no, no gray areas. It's either yes or no, on or off. But it's how you put all those together. And, and that's what we're doing is we're programming our mind uh, to do what we want it to do. And just like we're programming a computer. That's basically all it is. Now, with a computer, you need feedback. You know, if you send out a signal to do something, you don't know if it's got it. So you have a signal that comes back and feeds back to it. And that says, oh, okay, I need to adjust because I told it to go to this point, but it didn't go there yet. So I need to, okay, I need to keep telling it to go there. Oh, okay, it, it there went too far. I need to tell it to back up a little bit. You know, eventually it'll get there. That's the same thing you're doing with your mind. You're going to get the feedback. 
you know, what did you go through? You know, this feedback should be continuously coming back to you, you know, to correct everything uh, so that now you you get, uh, you know, feedback from a coach. And say, you know, you, you, you went through and you wanted to get a coach because, you know, if you're the coach and the student, you have a real bad student. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's tough to coach yourself. Uh, that's why you always have somebody else to coach you and help you through everything. So you get the feedback from them. You know, whether you record a video and then the coach watches it or it's in peers or something, you know, they're going to analyze that and come back and say, okay, here's what I'm seeing on this little bit spot right here. And then they can come back and show you, okay, here's you're doing this. Um, and then you take that feedback and then you make your adjustment. You know, it's not like you did something wrong. You just, that's a big feedback loop. You send out, you send out something, feedback comes back. You course correct and go. Uh, it's like anything else, you know. And in, in, in the um, audio book, I was talking, they was talking about, you know, that you take like a um, a, a missile that shot at a target. It's working on negative feedback, so it's going somewhere. It knows where it needs to go. It gets the feedback. Oh, I need course correct, you know, and then it keeps course correct until it finally hits this target. And that's what you want to do with, with your shooting is take that feedback and then course correct based on it. It's not you did wrong. It's, it's just feedback. It's not right or wrong. It's just feedback. What did you, what do you need to do with it? Just change it. Um, you know, that's, that's basically what you want to do is just take that feedback and go from there. Now, one thing we just want to, you know, quickly go, you know, the, you want to visualize that peak performance. Only visualize the absolute best that you want to do. And don't think of anything else. Don't say, well, you know, when you're going along, I've seen a lot of, um, uh, you know, the, I watch some of your football games. And a team is way ahead in the, in the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, they're way ahead. They lose. Now, how did they lose? They're so far ahead. Well, the team that's behind didn't lose focus. They want to get every yard they can, every point they can. The ones that are way ahead, you know, they started coasting. You know, maybe they they said, okay, we'll take our first stringers out, put our second stringers in. Oh, we're so far, let's put our third stringers in. You know, and and there it's like, oh, well, you know, we, let's not worry about it. We're so far ahead. And next thing you know, it comes down to the last play, and it's the last play, win or lose. And, and now they can't get their momentum back because they lost it. So you just want to keep that that drive, keep going through. Once you achieve a goal, then you want to keep going. So, you know, if you get so far ahead, you want to put in your second stringers. You know, if you're saying a football game, uh, put your second stringers in. But don't tell them don't not to score. You want them to score as much as they can. You know, if you start getting to where they get, put your third stringers in and tell them, I want you to score every time, every time score. Um, you know, there's there's a straight herd of Walter Payton. Every time he cut the ball, he run to the end zone. He run a touchdown in practice. Every time he got it, he run to the end zone. So what do you do in a game? Got the ball, run to the end zone. So there is there's something you you have that goal, you just want to go for it. You know, let's let's see, you know. We, we did talk a little bit about, um, you know, feedback and adjusting, you know, that's important part of it. You know, you want to take that feedback and utilize it, you know, to make those adjustments you need. And, you know, if you don't know what feedback to, that you need to get, you know, sometimes you take a coach and they're going to give you the feedback as long as, you know, if you're open to be coached, if you're, you're coachable and open for suggestions, you know, take the coach's suggestion. If if you don't like what the coach is doing, get a different coach. You know, so that's there. There's a lot of coaches out there. Uh, there's one that's going to be the perfect one for you. Um, just go through and, and and you know listen to them. Uh, another good tool we've talked about you know multiple times is a video. Take that video and then look at look at your stance, look at your grip, look at your draw, look at your release. You know, identify areas that can be improved, you know, and compare your shot to those of skilled archers. You know, maybe you can take, um, if you have a chance to watch a video uh, of some of these archers that shoot these 360 Xs, um, you know, or in a, in a five spot, you know, whatever you, you want to watch it. If you can get a video of them doing it, 
and then just sit there and analyze what they're doing on their video and then analyze what you're doing. You can kind of compare. Now, they may be doing it different because of some physical limitations they might have uh, or you might have, may not be able to do it exactly, but, you know, take that, use that. Um, you know, like I said earlier, you know, if you're, if you're not sure, take a video of your shooting um, and then upload your raw video to archduck101.com and say, hey, you know, can you take a my, look at my video um, and, and give me some pointers on how I can get better. And then show your, what you're shooting, how your groups are shooting. You know, take, take a shot, shoot five arrows and record all five shots. And, and we can see how your targets are going. We can look at everything else and we can give you some ideas. So just come out there and do that. You know, that's, that's something that um, is free in the group. You don't have to pay for that. That's all just free. We're here to help you out. You know, and then one of the things you want to do is you want to keep track of, of your, your shooting. So if you really want to improve, start logging your shots. So if you let, let's just say you're using a five spot, because that's mostly what I always shot was a five spot. Um, I didn't like shooting single spots because they wreck too many arrows. So, um, so you're going to shoot, shoot in the same order every time. So top left, top right, middle, bottom left, bottom right. And then you'll know that that's the order you go in and then put in there what you shot. And if you missed, you could put, um, you know, like a clock number, you know, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever, and, and put a number in a circle in it. And you know, okay, I got I got a four at nine o'clock. I got, I, I got another one at nine o'clock, nine o'clock. So now then you know where that arrow hit on that target as well as what the score was. So now you kind of see what's going on. If you're always to the left, now that you need to figure, okay, what am I doing? It's always pulling the left. Or maybe I'm always pulling left on or the the left ones, but I'm okay on the middle and, and and left on the other ones. Well, maybe you're lined up for that middle one, but you're not lining up for the other two shots. So there's ways that you can figure out exactly what's going on by logging the right information. You know, and don't don't be afraid to experiment. You know, there's different techniques, different training methods, you know, figure out what works good for you. Uh, you can talk to other archers, say, you know, what their training, you know, is, you know, and stay flexible, open mind. You know, maybe what you want to do is, you know, be serious. You know, if you let's, let's say you shoot um, five times a week. Well, five times a week shooting at the same target, the same thing, you know, that, that can get a little bit boring, let's say. So maybe you take, you practice two days on your target. The third day, you actually put out a game target. And you and you, you and somebody else shoots at a game target. Or, or let's say you have, uh, you know, like a tic-tac-toe target and you got five arrows. So you shoot, you shoot your five arrows and you shoot the next five arrows. You're trying to beat, you're trying to take away the five arrows that you shot. You know, if you're all by yourself, you got somebody else shoot within, it's kind of a little bit more fun. You know, shoot something different one of the days. Uh, you're still picking them out. You know, there's uh, dart games that you can play. Uh, there's a great big target. It looks like a big dart board that you throw ready with darts at. You shoot them with your bows. Uh, so there, you you know, you can play that. It's different spots. You're picking different such. You're not always shooting that center of that white ring, you know, or the center of the yellow ring or whatever it happens to be. You know, you know, keep, you know, keep some uh, changes in there. You know, you need to be consistent and patient. You know, because it, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, like the same room wasn't built in a day. I think it probably took a few centuries to build Rome. I don't know uh, how long it took, but it wasn't, you know, in a day. Um, and you're not going to master this in a day either. You know, you just need to be patient. And as long as, as long as you're improving, you're on the right course. Now, if you get to a point where you're not improving, you're not improving, and and you're actually starting to get it worse, well. You might need to take a break or get a coach because there's something that you're doing that's not there. Or, or maybe you're just getting, you know, you're, you're not into it as much as you was before. You know, take a little break. Instead of shooting seven days a week, five days a week, go down to shooting once or twice a week, you know, and then do other things, go off, do something else, come back. You know, sometimes when you leave a, something and come back a little bit later, you actually end up being better and advancing quicker because now you you kind of have to come back and you look at 
all your good things you're doing and you eliminate the bad bad things that you were doing you know so that's something you may have to do maybe maybe not you know it all just depends on um you know what you want to do uh, you know make sure you relax and use that mental mental rehearsal that we talked about earlier that's an important thing that you can do you know, there's a lot of different techniques you can use for relaxing. We, we talked about some of these, you know, before, you know, take a, um, you know, maybe when you get ready to come up to the range, what you do is you go in, you get it all set up before you even draw deep breath in, into the nose, you know, out through the mouth, relax, relax the thing, and then go through your process. You know, there, there's all kinds of things you can do, you know, whatever works for you, works for you. Um, just, just do that. And then just remember, the only the only shot that counts is the one you're doing now. The next one doesn't count, and the last one doesn't count. The last one's gone. The next one hasn't happened yet. Just worry about now. That's all I need to worry about. Yeah, you know, make sure you, you know, once again, make sure you're using that mental rehearsal in your practice as well. Don't just come out and practice and then figure out how to do it different at the game. You know, when you're competing. How you practice is how you're going to perform. So if you if you goof off while you're practicing, you're going to goof off while you're trying to perform. You're not going to have that in there. So make sure you're going through and doing all the things that you know you need to do um, before you go shoot every time. You know, and and if you do have any mental blocks, um, you know, there's there there's going to be mental blocks come in, and just go back and and you know start over with something else to do. You know, when you identify those those mental blocks, you know, they they can hinder your performance. You know, if you fail to identify them or you identify them and then you're feeling anxious about them, um, you know, so so you need if you do have any of those, you're going to you're just going to have to you know, go back and, and figure out what you was doing before. You know, just just don't, you know, don't let the, that something block you especially if somebody says something that, you know, goes against your positive thoughts, you're thinking what you want to do is that just immediately when they say something like that and, and then and just start you know, going through and then reaffirming that positive thing, you should get that out of your mind. Don't think about it anymore. Uh, it completely ignored. It doesn't exist. It doesn't matter uh, there. They might be trying to psych you out. So they, they get better, but what they're doing at the same time, when they put a negative thought in your head, they're also putting it in their head. So they say, don't miss. What did their mind hear? Miss. Their, their mind heard miss. So they're more likely going to miss if you know how to take that out, change it around to, I'm, I'm going to, this arrow is going to be dead center in this X ring. I can see it right now. There's no way it's going to not go in there. It's going to be there. So that's something you want to, um, you know, make sure you get all those things out of your, out of your mind <clears throat> you know once again you know you just need to make sure you're in the moment and not go off and and think about something else you know, nothing else matters at, at the time when you're shooting that arrow except shooting that arrow and don't remember you know don't forget you know you what you think is what you're going to do you know we're going to visualize on a five spot making every shot perfect, dead center, 60 times in a row. That gives you that 360X. And the worst you can do is tie. Because there's you can't, nobody can beat you. Um, so the, I don't know how they do ties on that. Maybe sudden death. But then if there's that, then it's like, okay. Um, it, it might be, you know, you, you got to shoot. 10 more X's. And so then you just picture, okay, um, we got five five more. So you go through your shot, your five shots, you go through your visualization, shooting all five, center X. <clears throat> so that's, that's kind of um, what we've gone through. We want to make sure that you're focusing on really, you know, uh, consistent things that is going to go through and really help you out in being, you know, that archer at that next level. Um, you know, one of the things you want to do is make sure you dedicate some time to practice those, you know, re rehearse them 
And, you know, there's going to be, you know, a lot of, a lot of things that you can do while you're thinking. And if you have to, if you're sitting here um, waiting for something, you know, if you have to keep your eyes open, keep your eyes open, but while your eyes are open, you can let your mind do what it wants to do. And maybe in your mind, you're visually going through your shooting process or whatever. It doesn't have to be in specific archery. It could be anything, you know, say you're going to, um, you know, you're going in to, to talk to somebody that you haven't talked to before or or a boss that's higher up, you know, and you think about, okay, you're going to go in, you're going to do this, this, and this, and this. You, you know what you're going to do. You're not going to be nervous because you know, you've already planned out what you're going to do. You say what you're going to do. You know what you're going to do. And, and they're just another person. You go in. And so you can use those techniques more than just in archery. But we just kind of focus this mostly on archery just because, you know, this is an archery podcast. Um, but, you know, let's let's go through and and. Uh, you know, get all those those mental things figured out. So <clears throat> let, let's go. A little, little conclusion here. As we conclude our discussion you know, on mastering the mental game in archery, remember that success on a range begins in the mind. By applying the principles and techniques we've covered today, you can cultivate mental fortitude, enhance your performance, and achieve your goals as an archer. So go forth with confidence, trust in your abilities, and shoot for the stars. Till next time, keep aiming true. And just want to remind everybody, you know, thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to join the Arch Talk 101 Facebook group uh, for the live podcast replays and expert advice. Uh, replays are available in the Arch Talk 101 Facebook group uh, on my YouTube channel, Learn to Fix It Yourself, and at archtalk101.com. And if you prefer to listen to the audio on Spotify and audible.com, uh, you can also get uh, Maxwell uh, Maltz's Psycho Cybernetics in Audible there. Uh, so that, that'd that be a good book to listen to. And, you know, once again, you know, thanks for watching. And the next lesson, lesson 14, would be the next time. And stay tuned for that. We're going to have, we're going to cover another cool subject uh, on archery, kind of take you to, uh, uh, the next level. And then I think the one after that, well, we've got have some more interviews lined up. So stay tuned. We got some more cool stuff coming. And thanks for watching. And my name is Rick Canterbury. I've been the host today on Arch Talk 101. And we'll see you on the next one.